All right. Our next guest says Biden inflation isn't going away as this week, the U.S. Department of Labor's Bureau of Labor Statistics announced that the consumer price index, that CPI we keep talking about, rose 3.5 percent in March from a year earlier. This measure of inflation was higher than any than many expected. And joining us now to discuss is Project 21 Ambassador Mike Hill from National Center for Public Policy. Mike, welcome to State of the Nation. You know, we, we just had Gene Valentino on in the previous hour and he brought up the CPI and he had a whole list of Biden inflation things. And it was really scary to look at what things cost back in like 2019-2020 versus now we're seeing anywhere from 33 to 65 percent increases on normal things that we all get at the grocery store i think the mean average was 45 percent increase what's going on here well what we see going on is an out of control both monetary and fiscal policy now monetary policy is of course controlled by the feds and fiscal policy is what happens with the legislative and executive branches. So what the feds do is we know they try to control inflation by adjusting the rate that they charge their member banks. And by doing that, those banks are forced to either increase or decrease what they charge to loan money particularly for credit cards, mortgages, cars, and so forth. Now, on the fiscal side, that's where the legislative and executive branch come in, where uh, they will control or they will dictate what happens with our economy through uh, taxes and spending. And we all know right now that spending is out of control. Our, our uh, federal deficit is over $34 trillion and has uh, just gone out of sight since Biden has been in office. So when you have that kind of uh, 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 deficit creation and then government spending, it causes inflation. Inflation is caused by too many dollars chasing too few goods. And as you mentioned at the beginning, we are all feeling it every time we go to purchase just about anything. Mike, I just got a message from Don in San Diego. Social Security benefits are on pace for a 2.6 cost of living adjustment in 2025. Rather than continuing to decelerate, consumer prices are once again building steam. Specifically, the CPIW increased 2.9% in January, 3.1% in February, and 3.5% in March, the highest reading in seven months. What are we doing to our seniors with these economic policies? Oh, we're hurting them because, you know, they're pretty much on a fixed income. You know, when we see these cost of living adjustments of 2.9% or whatever, it's not enough to even keep up with inflation. And so when they go to uh, buy groceries, uh, 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 clothing, the staples just to continue living, they can't keep up. And so it is hurting them dramatically. And because they feel that, this is going to hurt the Biden administration and Joe Biden when he comes up for his election, because the primary voters are the elderly those who are 45 and above, and of course our retirees, they vote. Now we know that right now, Joe Biden is trying to buy the young vote by spending insane amounts of money to remove their student loan debt. But, uh, and, and he hopes that by doing that, they'll go out and vote for him. Statistically, people in that age group, younger people don't vote at the same level as those who are uh, older. And so we find those who are on Social Security, they are feeling this sting of inflation um, more sharply. And I think it's going to spell bad news for Biden when it comes election time. Yeah, you bring up a really good point there. You know, uh, I, I was looking at a report earlier this week and they were talking about 
um, increases in property tax and um, you know state to state there's a number of states where this is happening I'm in Texas and they're very high here uh, came from California where everything else was really high so I don't know maybe it evens out at some point but when when I see a, a retired person you know wondering if they're going to be able to stay retired even though they own their home because the the taxes have gone the, you know property tax has gone up then you you throw this on top of it and cost of energy you know everything's going up um what i mean this seems like a big blunder for the biden campaign <laughs> i mean we see gas going up to five dollars again pretty soon here too probably so it's a huge blunder why do you think they why do you think they're so focused on you know the somewhat radicalized youth and people that you know young people that are in college debt do they really think that's a winning strategy well i think the reason why they think that that is a winning strategy for them is because people who are just leaving college are the most indoctrinated with the leftist ideology so they haven't been in the workforce long enough to know that that leftist ideology of 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 marxism communism doesn't work it doesn't work so that they, they just they have just left the academic arena where it's been uh driven into them for four or more years that communism is the way to go and they tend to believe it and so biden is hoping that these young people will believe it because when you look at removing their student debt and spreading it out to all taxpayers, that is what communism is. And so in their mind, they're thinking, well, yeah, this does work. No, it doesn't work. And the rest of the economy is feeling it because when they spend that kind of money, again, all those dollars chasing a limited amount of goods, it causes prices to go up. It's a basic economic law of supply and demand. And so as prices go up and these young people now get out into the workforce, they're finding that they're unable to afford a mortgage because those interest rates driven by inflation have gone up to high levels. And so they're forced to rent. And now because there are more renting instead of buying, again, supply and demand, it causes the rent structures to increase, rent prices because there's this demand for renting now. And I, I can tell you, I'm looking at this firsthand. I have three adult children. One owns his home, thank goodness. I have two who wanted to buy a home this year and could not because of the high interest rates that they're seeing for mortgage rates. And so they are now renting and the rent amount is almost equivalent to what a mortgage would have been before these mortgage rates went up so high. And I'm sure it's completely coincidental that most of the single family home transactions are going to companies like BlackRock that are then turning around and renting them out, trying to turn us into a nation of renters where you'll own nothing and like it, right? And forget about a mortgage. There was a video a couple of weeks ago where a young woman just graduated from college flipped out when she realized that working an hour at the job she has wouldn't even pay for a packet of chicken. She couldn't buy three chicken breasts in a pack at the supermarket with what she takes home in and out for an hour's worth of work. Exactly. And you raise such a good point, Tim, because uh, I just mentioned my two adult children who are looking to rent. Um, they were finding a tough time uh, with apartments, apartment rentals. I'm in Florida, the panhandle of Florida. Apartment rental rates were jumping at every single renewal. Every year they were going up. So what did they find they were able to rent? They found this community of homes. There must be, I'll guess and say 150 homes in this community, all rental homes. So these, this is property that, as you say, BlackRock, they go in, build these homes or buy these homes and then use them for rental property. And so my, my children have been forced 
to go in and rent these homes with the hopes that um, inflation is going to go down when we have a new president and then mortgage rates will go down and then they'll be able to buy. But right now they are renting in a community of homes that are all rental homes. Are they tiny homes? That's the other thing we keep seeing is this whole push towards living in a van. It used to be a joke to live in a van down by the river, you know, Chris Farley. <laughs> Uh, but now we've got like, you know, micro homes, uh, tiny homes, shipping container homes in San Francisco. They even put a number of those up right off the Embarcadero. It was such a strange thing to see. Well, actually, they're not that tiny, but you're, you're looking at 2,500 square feet, decent sized home. But what they're paying for it is what you would have paid for a mortgage just right. a few years ago. But instead, they're renting and not owning it right now. Um, you know, and and they're, I won't call them block homes, but they're all built exactly the same. They have the same floor design and layout. Um, nice homes, but again, um, you, you are paying a rental amount that just a few years ago would have been a mortgage payment so you could start building up uh, equity in that home. They're not doing that now. Yeah, not building up equity, not being able to save because the rents are so high now, that not being able to save for that down payment so that they can get into the vehicle that was traditionally the fast lane to the American dream. Maybe we need uh, Jimmy McMillan back with the rent is too damn high party. Right. Or all we need to do is get Congress to stop spending so much money. I mean, it, they, they just passed the bill, you know, was it a month or two ago of $34 trillion and, and, and money going to Ukraine, money that is funding these illegal immigrants who are coming in. And by the way, you know, you, you look at the Bureau of Labor Statistics, it says that over 300,000 jobs have been created within the past month. What they don't tell you is those are part-time jobs, and the majority of those are going to illegal immigrants, illegal immigrants and government jobs. They are not going to private sector full-time employment jobs. And so we have, again, government spending this money to take care of illegals, to take care of a border in Ukraine, but not the border, our northern and southern border, not taking care of that, fighting these wars when instead the energy sector, they are not allowing um, uh, on federal lands to produce the oil and gas that is necessary to fuel our economy. So now we're seeing gas prices uh, uh, per gallon, $3.50 and higher and climbing. When you might recall just three years ago, it, it was uh, close to around $2, $2.25, at least here in the panhandle of Florida. So yeah. all of this is being created by a uh, fiscal and monetary policy, which is out of control. We must rein it in. And isn't Mike, it curious they that they, oh, go ahead, Hesh. Uh, just a simple question. Are they trying to destroy our society? Are they trying to bankrupt yeah. America? Because you look at the debt and you compare it to GDP and it's just it's like this is madness. This is a suicide mission and, and anyone should be able to see it, especially, you know, people at the Fed and people in Congress. They, they do see it. But what I think is going on is that, one, it, it is a march towards communism. It's a march towards one world government. And part of that is to, if you use the communist plank, it is to come in, disrupt what is there, um, take it down, and then come back with what they say is something better. You know, like Biden's Build Back Better. So it's the, that is the Marxist communist plank, is to tear it down, destroy it, and then we're going to be the saviors of the world, and we're going to put in a better position, a, a better system to run it. They are so yeah, right, arrogant. 
yes, I'm sorry, I was going to say they are so arrogant that they can't recognize it has never worked with any country anywhere since its inception. But they are so arrogant to think that we can do it right this time. We're going to well, do see, it like, right. Yeah, they they didn't use those other failed regimes, didn't use true communism. We're going to use true communism. That's right. and, the, the line I like best is that uh, capitalism is the unequal distribution of prosperity and communism is the equal distribution of misery. And isn't it curious that energy and food, two items you just mentioned, are not included in the CPIW, the Consumer Price Index for for wages and whatnot, but yet they do include government jobs in the jobs numbers. Maybe if we're going to play Fast and loose with numbers. Maybe we need jobs numbers that don't include government jobs. Exactly. And that consumer price index, as you say, is made up of a basket of goods that does not include the most volatile uh, uh, commodities of uh, fuel and food. And so they pull that out. So it's not giving us even a true picture of what the, uh, the uh, inflation is. They're saying at 3.5 percent, but we all know it's much higher than that. Um, in some areas, we're seeing the cost of new cars have gone up 22 percent. We're seeing the cost of food skyrocketing, as, as you had mentioned. Um, an hour's worth of labor would not buy a meal for this young lady to go to the grocery store and, and purchase uh, a, a chicken uh, to eat. And so what we need to do is be more transparent with the numbers. And by the way, the, the, the feds have set this arbitrary rate of 2% as a target rate for inflation. What a lot of people don't understand is before the feds came along in 1914, inflation was pretty much unheard of. Inflation, when it did happen, it was a uh, very short term or during a time of war or, or some other uh, catastrophe. But it was not this long-term steady, even 2% target rate. It was not there until the feds came along. And by the way, throughout this entire scenario, you mentioned those who are being hurt the most, our seniors and those who are do not have a lot of income. But those who are very wealthy, including the banks, the feds, the, 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 the private banks, um, they are doing very well. Yeah, of course they are. Of course they are. They seem to come out on top no matter which direction the arrow is going on the graph. Uh, Mike, we're out of time. This has been Mike Hill with us. Mike, people can find your work, of course, at nationalcenter.org. Anywhere else you'd like to shout out before we got to let you go? You got 20 seconds. They can email me at MikeHillConservative at gmail.com. MikeHillConservative at gmail.com, and I will respond. All right, excellent. Thank you for putting that out there, and thank you for joining us here and sharing your expertise with us. Mike Hill, it's been a pleasure. We'll look forward to your next appearance.